You know, there's an awful lot of games about an infinite stream of falling blocks, but there's never been a game about the origin of the stream of infinite falling blocks. Really makes you wonder where these things are coming from. <laughs> It is the 90s, and there is time for Clax! Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're going to be playing one of our all-time favorite childhood games for all of us. I know it, guys, because we're all children of the 90s, and this is a game that we did not stop hearing about, Clax! The game that all the children in our neighborhood were playing. It's Clax! Your parents would yell at you, You better not be upstairs playing that damn Clax! It's bedtime! It's Clax, baby! Clax! The game, we call them Clax Attacks, when you just couldn't handle school anymore and you had to zone out to some sweet, sweet Clax. You'd look around the world and everyone was just jamming the Clax. Um, I'm just kidding, if you can't tell. I have never heard of this game in my entire life, Clax. Um, this game uh, was an arcade game. But it was also ported to various systems, including, like, the NES and the Game Boy. And it kind of strikes me as one of those games that, like, you convince your parents to rent you. You know, you go to the video store and you'd be like, Mom, I want this one. This looks cool. Clax. I don't know. I never heard of it. Let's give it a try. And you'd bring it home and you'd load it into, you'd slam it into your NES. And then you'd say, oh, this is what I'm going to be playing this weekend. Okay. I, m maybe I can get into this. It's Clax. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, had a bit of a cough attack there. But anyway, Clax here, as you can basically see, um, and I don't know why the K turns into a hand. I guess it's a hand making a K. So, like, if this game had taken off, maybe Atari was imagining people would meet on the street and go, yo, and they'd make, like, a K with their hand, and they wouldn't have to say any words, and their friends would just know. They're like, let's do it, and they'd, like, run to the arcade in unison and go play some Clax. It's like the street sign for Clax. Throw your hand up, make a K. Um, anyway, this is, as you can see, Midway's kind of answer to Tic-Tac-Toe slash Tetris. Um, actually, I didn't know Tic-Tac-Toe needed an answer, but apparently it did. Let's go ahead and hop in here. Pew, pew. I love that sound effect, actually. So, a very simple game. Uh, we're going to start at wave one. Uh, you have the left and the right button, and you have a... Or, so, you have the left and the right sort of stick, and then you have a button. And all you have to do is sort of slam down your clacks, and if the clack in just the right way, you go ahead and you get points. So, let's go ahead and do this. Um, alright, so we're gonna slap this one right down there. And if you hold down, I guess, on the joystick, then the clacks come down more quickly to you. So we're gonna go ahead like this. Then we're gonna go ahead and grab this guy, and we're gonna... Oh! Oh, the order! The guy on top is the first one to drop. See, this is this is uh, the type of info that uh, a clax noob like myself would not have. Okay, so we're going to have to grab these. So there is quite a bit of strategy here, actually. I, I don't mean to rag on clocks, by the way. Um, you know, I'm sure... Oh, we passed the level. That's all we had to do. Um, I'm sure this is a decent uh, puzzle game, and I'm looking forward to actually playing it. I love these, like, simplistic uh, puzzle games. But at the same time, you know, this is a game that, like, I have, like, never... Oops, missed that one. What happens to them when you miss them? Do they just fall off into space? Um, but this is this is a puzzle game that I have absolutely no experience playing, so I have no idea, um, you know, useful strategies, and I don't have like any like cherished memories of playing this as a kid. You know, but the closest memory I could like dredge up are like memories of playing like tic tac toe with my grandma, because this looks like tic tac toe. And uh, <laughs> boy, what a crappy game tic tac toe is, by the way. Just uh, just to get off topic for a little bit. But, like, literally, tic-tac-toe is, like, always a stalemate. When you're playing as a kid, then uh, sometimes you can sort of get into scenarios where, like, one, you know, you'd beat your grandma or she would beat you or whatever. But, like, have you... Tic-tac-toe is one of those games that, like, you, you become five years old and you stop playing for the rest of your life. Because there's literally no point to playing. It is... There's just nothing to it. Um... I would actually love to see, like, a modern, professional, like, tic-tac-toe circuit with, like, pros and stuff. 
You know, like, Johnny Goldman Jr. is going for the middle X. I think that's a mistake, Chuck. You know, you, you go for the middle, it seems like a good strategy, but where are you going to go from there? You're just going to get pinned down on the left and the right, you know, with announcers and stuff. Um, a modern tic-tac-toe -toe, uh, tournament. This is how it would go, though, by the way. Um, game one, stalemate. Game two, stalemate. Game three, stalemate. Game four, stalemate. It would just be stalemate, 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 stalemate. Oh, we have another draw. Whoa, did I throw that piece forward? Hold on, hold on. Oh, you can throw pieces up. Interesting. So you can, like, juggle. You know what? Uh, credit to this game. I know, I know I poked some fun at it when we were starting the video here, but it is actually, it's got some moves to it. It's got some moves. It's hip, it's young. I, I didn't realize. I, I should have held my tongue before I just blatantly went and judged, judged what could be a terrific game. I need to learn more acceptance, guys. That's one thing I gotta work on, I think, acceptance. All right, let's just hold on to these whites because there's, there's no room for whites in our multicolored, uh, you know, paradise of blocks that we're building here. These clacks make funny noises when they roll down. Like sometimes it sounds like uh, like they're clicking and other time they're making like smushy noises and then they're making like clacky noise. Oh, failed. <clears throat> what the hell, I was flying through the level so easily. Now we get here and all of a sudden like dead right away. On wave three, hint four in a row counts as two clacks. All right. So here, let's try this. Let's let's see if we can get a four in the row. So this game is sort of a hybrid, not even a hybrid, but it, it, it is basically Midway's answer to tic-tac-toe. Um, it kind of has like uh, elements of Dr. Mario in it because you got to line up the colors. Of course, it came out at a time when like Tetris was huge. See, so listen, they were making like bleh, 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 like gross noises. These clacks are so so weird, man. I can't pin them down. What are they? Are they alive? Are they just like weird blocks? I don't know what's happening. Throw that guy away. See, listen to the sounds. It's weird. They're making like farting noises. That is not appropriate, clacks. All right. Um, I I don't have a I don't have like a master strategy here. If you guys are hoping for me to have like a plan here, my plan is uh, I don't have a plan. Which is not a good plan, let me tell you. Many, many, many a person has found themselves in that situation before, and it is not a good idea. Um, but this came out at a time when, like, Tetris was big, so these puzzle games were a big deal. Was ported widely to many, many different systems. And again, this is the type of game that, like, never heard of my whole life. If I ever played it, it would have been, like, a rental by accident. Where simply, you know, um, <clears throat> we'd go to a rental store, and back in the day... <clears throat> Excuse me. Back in the day, you didn't know what games were good or not. Like, there was no online resource to go read about games. So, like, you just have to, like, rent games and hope that they're good. Oh, we missed one there. Oh, crap. We're getting overloaded here. Come on. So, yeah, you just have to go by the cover box. And, like, clacks. I don't know. It sounds like it could be cool. Clacks. Like, what could it be about? Um, it sounds like... I mean, like, what would Tetris be about? If you never heard of Tetris, it sounds like a tennis game to me. Clacks, I guess from the title screen, whoops, messed up there. Guess from the title screen, I would have guessed it had something to do with, like, uh, dancing. I don't know why, but that just sounds about right. Man, we're really getting stuck on level three here. Like, like just the hand, the hand graphic on the title screen, it made me think of, like, some kind of, like, hip, like, uh, breakdancing game. I don't know. But, like, what else could Clacks be about? Um, kind of sounds like Alien. I don't know. Could be about aliens or something. Uh, I guess being about blocks makes sense because clacks is kind of the sound the blocks make when they f when they fall down. They kind of go click clack click clack click clack. Uh, let's just do this. And we'll get you. We'll get you. Throw you down. Throw you up. Grab you. You you. you. Oh, we're here. Are you guys ready for Combo Town? Combo Town population us. Boom, boom! That should have counted for something. So I guess the trick is to go with vert with uh, horizontals. I'm doing all verticals here. Maybe I should like mix up my strategy because we're not we're not passing this this level very easily. All right, this is a freebie. There we go. So yeah, just watching me stack stack blocks. I mean, what would the backstory for this game be? Um. 
I mean, not, not that, like, Tetris had a backstory either. What would the backstory for Tetris be? Tetris is, like, a very rushing game, by the way. Like, if you ever play it, um, it has, like, little, it has, like, little graphics in the background. It's, like, Russian palaces and stuff, and you got the, like, the Russian music as you're playing. I don't know. What, what would the backstory for Tetris be? Maybe, maybe Tetris is, like, a high-level metaphor for, like, the struggle of the proletariat against the privileged bourgeoisies. It's, like, it's, like, truly a communist game. It's, like, literally... <laughs> It's like you are playing, you are developing a communist nation if you play Tetris. Metaphorically speaking, of course. Okay, let's let's try and like slam these down and get some horizontals going. Because I'm I'm sick of the vertical. It is not working out for us. Uh, we're just gonna hold on to this and this. Okay, I guess we'll do this. Get some diagonals going too. Gonna gonna stretch the capacity of my mind to do things. Oh no. No! 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 Oh! Oh no! We're messing up! Damn! Oh, I was trying to get the diagonal of the orange and getting a horizontal of the blue. Too much happened at the same time. Oh, my poor little brain. Oh, no, no, wait. We want to keep going. We want to stick on this wave. Oh! We must get three diagonals! Oh my god. Alright, for anyone who's actually paying attention, who was like, Jay, you idiot! Get a diagonal! Oh my god. Alright. Well, we'll be able to do this in no time. I was wondering why this level is taking- I'm like, how are we getting stuck on wave three, guys? It's such a mystery. This game's gotten so complex and sophisticated. No person could possibly beat this. Meanwhile, uh, all I needed to do was get uh, three diagonals. Um, I guess I'm committing to the orange here. I mean, I don't have to. Let's just get rid of that yellow, get out of the way. It's like they they know that I was trying to go all orange, so now they don't want to give it to me. Ugh, fine. Get rid of these. Fine, we'll do we'll do blue. Will that will that appease you? Will that make you happy? Oh, now you give me the orange. Now you give me the orange. Are you kidding me? What the hell? Where are the blues? Ugh. This this is this strategy is working out really poorly. Where the hell are the blues? <laughs> Oh my god. Just juggle these endlessly. Here is a blue, finally. Oh, shoot. I dropped it in the wrong spot, too. Oh, wait. We gotta do this. Oh my god. We're totally dying, aren't we? We got a diagonal. Now we just need one more diagonal. Okay, we gotta... If we can clear the blue... Then we just slap an orange down and we got it! Three dag. I did it! I did it! I can follow instructions. Take that, whoever didn't believe in me. Point See? Wave. I figure things out eventually. It takes me a while. I'm slower than the average bear. But once I figure it out, I'm pretty good. Um, oh, shoot. I didn't even pay attention to the instructions here. Um, okay, hold on. Just in the interest of knowing what we do on this level, let's go ahead and continue. Wave. You must get 10,000 points. Oh, okay. This one's easy. I can do this. The fighting wave. Let's do it. Let's challenge all of our inner clacks. And I don't know what color I want to go with yet. Hmm. Okay, we'll do this, this. We're going to go with diagonals because I think they're worth more. Do this and this. Now, we can get a diagonal. Either way, look what I did there. With either white or green, we can get diagonals. That's what you call strategy, guys. Strategijum. That's planning ahead. Being pro. Oh shoot! <laughs> That's what you call being stupid, though. Making making a dumb mistake. That's okay. Everybody's got a few of those in them. We we can we can look the other way and forgive, forgive and forget. That's what I always say. And there we go. Another diagonal. Boom! We just flew through that level. Man, turns out if you follow instructions in video games, they can get significantly easier. Okay, so Tetris, you must survive 40 tiles. I can do this. So Tetris is basically a high-level metaphor for the struggle of the bourgeoisies. Or no, the struggle of the proletariat against the bourgeoisies. I always forget which way it goes. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Um, so what is happening in this game, then, I wonder? This game is like... What is this game? This game is like a training video for working at Amazon.com, maybe? Like, this is what... When you, when you go to work at Amazon.com, they're like, yeah... 
You know, you're going to be doing a lot of stacking with a lot of boxes. So uh, let me introduce you to a little training game called Clax. And you got to like, kind of like prove yourself by getting like to a high level on Clax. That would actually be a pretty awesome uh, job interview process. Just saying. Um, it looks like I have like some kind of advanced strategy here, but I'm really just kind of winging it and hoping I don't die. And it's kind of working. Not as well as I'd like, though. Oh, no. Okay, we have no place for these white pieces. White and yellow. And green. We got three colors that are completely dead to us. What we really want are... Not this. Not this. Oh, God. What do we do here? What do we do? <laughs> Damn it. Okay, I got too fancy trying to make horizontals. I should just make verticals because my brain thinks in... Like, how come my brain thinks vertically but not horizontally? I don't know. But, oh, shoot, I almost didn't continue there. We're going to go ahead and continue. So, yeah, I don't know. This is a training video for Amazon, maybe? Or maybe it's like, uh, this kind of looks like a Guitar Hero. Do you guys think? When I first lo saw a screenshot of this game when I was preparing to make this video, I, I thought uh, Guitar Hero. That was my first thought. And I thought it was going to be some kind of music game. But it came out way too This came out, like, 1989. Guitar Hero wasn't even, like, I don't even think the guy who made Guitar Hero was born yet. Uh, which is pretty sad. No, actually, I think he was. I don't think I don't think things are that old yet. But uh, he's probably pretty young. We'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Boom, 10,000. 10 Gs, man. 10 Gs in Clax dollars. That can buy you a lot of colored blocks. Let me tell you. You spend some night with a couple of reds with, like, a purple on the side. Three-way block colors, baby. Get some diagonals in the bedroom. Yeah. I guess that's what... Uh, when you live in a world of falling blocks... Blocks are both your currency and the object of your sexual affections, I guess. <laughs> just, it's just a completely block-based universe. Block-based currency, block-based blaced, blaced pleasures. Oh my god, I can't even talk. I've been saying block so much. I think saying block so much, it's like screwing up my mouth. I got blocks in the mouth, which sounds weird. Sounds like I'm a baby who's like trying to sample the world through my mouth. Does this taste good? Does this taste good? That's what babies do. They're so stupid. They just go around putting stuff in their mouth. Feeble humans. Oh, we did it. Oh, we got a little applause. Oh, we had an audience there. It's an audience of blocks watching us place blocks. Was that impressive? Ooh, now we get to warp. Um, I don't think... I don't. Am I ready for level 16? Wait. Oh, I didn't press the button. Oh, no. Oh, what happened? In the world of Clax, we're now out on the high seas. This is a high seas adventure. This is this is bad. I should not have jumped this far ahead. What am I doing? What was I thinking? Okay, th so far things don't seem too much more complicated than earlier on, but I know things can be deceptive. I, I, I Oh, what what is happening? This one can't decide on a color. Are you just anything? Ah, it's a wild it's a wild block. That's a block who uh he like couldn't he couldn't decide on an allegiance. He's like, well, you know, I kind of agree with the politics of red, but you know, the social issues of purple really speak to me more. And at like a fundamental level, I know I'm a green, so uh, I'll just really be anything. Uh, I'll, I'm I'm what you call a swing voter in in Blocktopia here. Blocktopia, the land where all blocks can just be blocks. Nobody has to worry about being judged, judged for the colors that they aren't. They can just be judged for the colors that they are. No, in fact, judging is wrong. There's no judging in Blocktopia. I take it back. Blocks aren't judged at all. Um, okay, now we screwed ourselves out of a spot for purple. That's okay. Purple can go here. And we'll try and make a diagonal. If we can. Oh, here's, a, here's another wild. We go here. And, oh god, I can't think. I can't think fast enough. Oh god, let's just make these problems for another day. Just throw them away. There we go. We got a diagonal. We got that. We got that. Oh! Oh, I thought I was actually doing well for a while. Then I missed, like, every single one in a row. Oh no! Oh, there, there's no room there. Oh no! Oh, things are going bad. Things are going bad. Oh, the purple's falling! Oh, and I died. Uh, let's give this one another shot. I have a feeling we've re we've very quickly reached the maximum of my uh, of my game potential here. Choose higher levels at warps. That is a terrible hint. 
That is, did you see that hint between levels there? It says, hint, choose higher levels. That's, that's, that's a bull hint. Because that's, that's the kind of hint that screws you. Ah, uh, so when you throw pieces up, upwards, it can buy you more time, but you really have to worry about the timing of how you're doing that. Because if you get the timing wrong, you can really just sort of end up screwing yourself. Get some diagonals. I, I, I can't remember if this level has a point. Like if I'm supposed to get diagonals or horizontals. I think at level 16, it's just survive. Just survive in this crazy mixed up world called Klaxotopia. Where the blocks are both currency and people. And pets. And what the hell, we build our houses out of them too. We pretty much, it's pretty much nothing but blocks. Kind of like atoms in our universe. Really, atoms are kind of like everything for us. Like when you really stop and think about it, atoms are just everything. Um, I don't really have a plan anymore. Uh oh, my plan is don't die, because those multicolored ones are really screwing me up. I can't tell what color I should be placing where anymore. The wild ones, there we go, okay. I knew I was bound to hit it by chance eventually. Um, we're in a lot of trouble right now. We're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> just get out of here. Be a problem for tomorrow. Let's just see how long we can juggle them up up there. And just keep throwing them forever. It's not a, it's not a viable long-term strategy, but it makes you feel like you're surviving. Yeesh. Okay, hold on. Oh, damn it. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to die here because I want to actually go back a little bit. I just want to try once more on a slightly easier level. So we're totally miffing this one. That was the most terrible showing. Everyone in the audience is like, oh, really? You did that bad? That sucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the high seas adventures of this... I don't know what's even happening here. It's like, um... It's like we're shipping clacks overseas. We're on like some kind of like oil tanker and we were like shipping the clacks overseas. Like, why does it make like a gross farting sound effect? That's terrible. Uh, we want to go to the J, not Jax. J, J is number one. Yes, the highest score and the best per credit average. <laughs> Was there any doubt? Um, it is the 90s, and there is time for Collect! It's Clack is Attack Time! It's the game of the 90s we all played! Everyone was obsessed with, nobody's ever heard of. Okay, let's go ahead and jump to level 11. I feel like that's a nice five drops per game. Clack wave. That's a nice... Oh, now we're in space! Now we're in space! What is happening here? Man. This is like... Maybe this isn't... This isn't a training video for Amazon. This is like, I don't know. It was like an alien shipping, mining operation thing going here. These are, the aliens are going around mining stuff. And we're going around collecting them into like our, our spaceship here. It's about as reasonable an explanation as any, I suppose. Um, ooh, we got a multicolored one. I don't know what to do with it. I'm going to put it right there for now. We'll figure it out later. Your problem for another day. It opens up a lot of possibilities, though. Like I could do that. Hoyo, and get a horizontal. I'm starting to think in clax dimensions, guys. Um, we'll do this. We'll do this. Do this and this. This. Oh yeah, we're getting it now. Jay's getting the hang of it. Once Jay gets the hang of a game, oh, it's on. It is on like some kind of Kong. Boom. Um, okay, a little, little bit of more random trivia for you with this game. You might wonder, what kind of trivia could we possibly have? So this game was originally an arcade game, and it was ported widely. And... Ooh, let's try this. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, well. Uh, it was ported widely, but one of the programmers who ported this game for Game Boy Color, he, um... Oh my god, hold on, I have to think. Oh, look at this, look at this... A uh, huge number of clacks coming down here. Oh, God. No, no, damn it, no, damn it. No, 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 it's all falling apart, no. Oh, come on, hold it together. Hold it together. Ah, get him, get him. Don't, never give up, never surrender. Guys, remember me, remember me. Oh, it's too much, my brain can't handle it. I'm having thinking failure. No! Oh, we got a we got a horizontal. Oh, we got a combo. Oh, we passed the level. Oh man, that was hard on the old brain noggin. 
I can't believe that happened. I thought I was dead. I had given up. I was done. Wow. Wow, what a way to end. All right, so we're never going to do as good as that, so let's not even try. Let's just go through this level nice and slowly. Anyway, one of the programmers who was charged with porting this game to the Game Boy Color hid a wedding proposal to his girlfriend in the game, which is kind of a cool cool idea, right? And then you get your girlfriend to play it, and then you're like, surprise, will you marry me? Only one little problem to that little plan of his. <laughs> it took her three years to find the proposal. <laughs> Could you imagine you got all this trouble of programming in a proposal to like a video game that you've been developing for a company. You hide it in there, risking your job and livelihood. Then, uh, you know, you give it to your girlfriend. You're like, here, I got you a game. And she's like, oh, great. And like every day he was probably like, so uh, have you finished that game yet? She's like, nah, I'm getting kind of bored of that one. Maybe I'll play it later. And he'd be like, cool, cool. Well, um, you know, like if you do want to play it again sometime, that'd be, that'd be cool. She's like, nah, I'm really into like Angry Birds right now. He's like, cool. Cool, cool. Like, trying not to, like, make a big deal out of it. Takes her three years to find the proposal. I think, honestly, when I read about that, too, it said his then-girlfriend. I think he broke up with her before he proposed, which would actually be the ultimate kick in the junk, where after you break up with someone, then you go back and you're just, like, randomly playing that game for some reason, then you find the proposal, you're like, oh my god, Tim was gonna propose to me? And maybe, like, you're regretting it and stuff, I don't know. Um, so that's a little bit of trivia. But this guy didn't just hide a wedding proposal. I think he was the most, the boredest uh, programmer ever. Because he also hid, um, he hid a snake game. You know, the old snake phone game. I think he hid a game like that in this game, in the Game Boy port. And he also hid, um, oh shit. He also hid an adventure game. Okay. Like, I'm all for, you know, slacking off at work. But when you have time to literally hide two other games and a wedding proposal to your girlfriend in the game you're supposed to be developing, I think they're not giving you enough to do at work. I'm just, I'm just gonna say it. I'm just gonna go ahead and judge. I think you could be more productive at work. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So there you go. I don't know. Um, have you guys ever hidden anything in places? It sounds, it sounds kind of weird. I remember when I used to work at Blockbuster Video. Um, it was it was a long time ago. It was actually well after the All Your Base Are Belong to Us thing uh, had come out, but I always thought that was such a cool video where like All Your Base was like photoshopped into like photos everywhere. So I used to actually like hide it around the store so that like, uh, you know, it'd just be like, you know, stickers on the wall and stuff. I don't know, it was, it was totally dorky, but uh, yeah, I used to like hide stuff. I don't know, I just thought it'd be fun if anyone ever noticed. Um, it's like adding real world Easter eggs. It's like sometimes, sometimes life isn't interesting enough. You gotta add Easter eggs. Um, and I, I stick by that. Oops, that was dumb. My finger slipped there. Also, when that block fell, it kind of screamed like it was dying. It was like, ah! Maybe these are like block younglings. Ah, who the hell knows? I, I'm done trying to figure this game out. Just hurts my head too much. Anyway, Clax, this is one of the games in the book, 1001 Video Games You Must Play Before You Die. We've been checking it out here today, and I gotta say, it is a it is a surprisingly fun puzzler. Um, I'm shocked that I never heard of it before. Um, I'm shocked, shocked, uh, not that shocked. I'm actually not that shocked because um, um, there are like classic games that I've never heard of before. I don't know how classic this is. I don't know, maybe you guys can help me with this, but have you guys heard of this game before? Did you know what we were getting into when uh, when you clicked on this video? Or were you just like, what the hell is this? A screenshot makes it look like Rock Band. What is this game? Um, because I, again, I've never heard of Clax. I don't quite know how popular this game was. I don't even know anyone who owned it. But definitely it strikes me as one of those like, Nintendo games that you might rent by accident and on a weekend like that's where I probably would have seen it if I ever saw it anywhere I don't know as far as puzzle games go. It's it's up there like it, it has similar kinds of mechanics to something like Tetris or Dr. Mario has some complexity to it So yeah, I could definitely see this being a fun game if you like puzzle games and you've never tried this game before This is the kind of puzzle game that I think would still hold up because there's still you know You can flick blocks forward. You can speed them up. You can put them down in different order. They're wild cards There's quite a few moves that you can make here, which gives it quite a bit of strategy So yeah, uh, if you're a puzzle fan, I think this is a, a great game to try out before you die um and that's that's my opinion what do you guys think uh, about clax here you can let me know in the comments down below and as always thanks for watching guys if you've been enjoying the video don't forget to like the video subscribe to the channel because i'll be back in a couple days oh my god you can order clax t-shirts 
Oh, somebody needs to send eleven ninety five to this address right now and try and get a Clax t-shirt. Oh, that's amazing. Oh my god. Offer expires December 31st, 1990 in US and Canada only. Four to six weeks for delivery. Holy crap, I can't believe we discovered this. Does someone own a Clax t-shirt? If you do, take a photo and send it to me because I want to see this crap. That's amazing. Wow. The things you discover when you go back in these old games. I've never seen a t-shirt ad in an old arcade game. But lo and behold, it exists. This screen is not going away, by the way. Oh, there it goes. Maybe it's like, you did so good in Clax, we know you want to show off. Send us $20 and we'll send you a freaking awesome t-shirt. That'd be awesome if it like had your name like embroidered into the shirt or something like that. Anyway, guys, <laughs> until next time, take care of yourselves. Don't get in too many blocky problems. And otherwise, peace. I feel like this title screen is kind of missing like a good tune, like a good sick 90s beat would really like make this game just that much more awesome. Also, look, later on, you end up in a forest. What is happening in the world of Clax? There's a hidden backstory here. I know it, guys. Something is going on in the world of Clax. We just weren't smart enough to figure it out. The thing about falling blocks is they never end, it seems. You know, if there's one thing I've learned from playing all these puzzle games... You know, if there's one thing I've learned from playing all these block-based puzzle games, it's that in the world of falling blocks, falling blocks never stop. You know, there's an awful lot of games about... You know, there's an awful lot of games about an infinite stream of falling blocks, but there's never been a game about the origin of the stream of infinite falling blocks. Really makes you wonder where these things are coming from. <laughs>